Hey, what's going on? My name is Kevin Deers, and this is Everflowing Stream, my YouTube channel where I get to uh, feature in-depth interviews with metal, punk, and hardcore bands, usually uh, bands of the more extreme variety. Uh, this time I'm going to be heading to Australia. Well, I didn't head to Australia, but I interviewed someone from Australia. That's Max from Internal Rot as well as Faceless Burial. Uh, thank you anyone who has... Uh, subscribed, commented, or liked any of my videos. I really appreciate it. Over the past year, I've really uh, been enjoying learning how to uh, use Adobe Premiere and upload stuff to my YouTube channel. I come from the land of radio and audio and podcasting, so it's been really cool to uh, kind of learn this and, and put this skill set in my tool belt. Uh, without any further ado, let's jump into my interview with, with Max from Faceless Burial. Before that, though, I do have to mention they have a new album called At the Foothills of Deloration. Uh, when, we inter when we did this interview, they had not announced that they were coming out with that record yet. We talked a little bit about uh, a future record coming soon, but uh, they did not. Oh, hey, look, it's the cat. It's Gary. He's, he's making a cameo. Anyways, uh, they had not announced that they were doing that, uh, releasing the album yet, but uh, they just did, and I got it on CD, and it's badass. Without any further ado, though, let's jump into it. It's uh, my interview with Max from Eternal Rot and Faceless Burial on Everflowing Stream. Hey, what's going on? I'm chatting with Max from uh, two different bands. He is quite the maniac over there in Australia. He is a singer for a band called Internal Rot. They are fierce grindcore. And then he is a drummer for a band called Faceless Burial. He looks a bit like a collegiate professor right now. So you would never guess that he sings in these like this brutal band and plays drums in that brutal band. But, you know, welcome to the show, man. How you doing? Oh, uh, thanks for having me. Really appreciate it. I'm good. Uh, yeah. So what time is it right now? You're 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 in Melbourne right now. Yeah, I'm in the future. 4.30 uh, p.m. on a beautiful Friday. Yes, and it's how is it in the future? Uh, it's pretty boring. Yeah, it's pretty quiet. Yeah, but it's it's nice. You should join me. Okay, I will be joining you in about twelve hours. So uh, cool. this is eleven thirty here on a Thursday in Seattle. So uh, good times, man. Um, so you know, I just got to ask. It's four thirty. You're doing an interview right now. Uh, does does extreme metal pay your bills, or do you have to have a normal, boring day job like the rest of us? Uh, no, it, it certainly doesn't pay the bills, <laughs> especially um, especially coming from Australia. <laughs> uh, I don't think there's many extreme metal bands that are uh, making big bucks out of out of what they're doing at the moment. But um, I wouldn't say my job is boring, but I, I run a record store, so I'm I'm pretty. Uh, you know happy about that but uh other than other than that yeah pretty standard so you run a record store is it so you you own the record store yeah yeah i own a record store called the searches in uh melbourne holy shit that's yeah. so awesome there's there's like quite a few cool record stores just like right up the street from me uh yeah but you know i I'm stoked to see that. I mean, you have record uh, holders behind you and you have like a blind guardian record. You have a Witchfinder general record. Uh, how Hell long yeah. is, <laughs> how long has your uh, record store been in operation? You know, when did you start that? Um, so I, I came on board with the, the record store uh, about seven years ago now, but mm -hmm. the shop itself has been in existence for around 15 years. Mm -hmm. or so um, kind of, uh, downtownish Melbourne, if you would, you know, not too far away from the central area of Melbourne. Yeah. Were you like a huge I mean, record nerd, just like, for since you got into music? Yeah, I grew up around records. My dad was a collector, so okay. um, you know, I started pretty young, and um, you know, got into it through him. Uh, but you know, it's ne I never thought I would end up working in a record store. I tried and tried. You know, growing up, like, yep. you know, all the local shops here and, you know, never, never thought it would ever happen. I um, kind of fell into it by a complete coincidence, um, which I was stoked about. So sold my collection, and, um, bought in as much as I could. Um, yeah, it's been a good journey. It's an interesting um, being on the other side of it, too, you know. Mm -hmm. I worked at a record store for quite a while. And, uh, you know, when I worked there, we got a, we got a discount. So you know, it was almost like I just never made money because everything I, my hold pile was just so massive that like, I like, you know, I, yeah, it yeah. was, 
it was good though. I got some great records, made some good memories, and uh, yeah, man. I mean, a absolutely. lot of this is I mean, behind me. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and I'm sure it's the same with yourself. Like growing up, you know, the record store was the first thing you'd go to in a new city. You know, mm-hmm. figure out what's what's happening, who's playing. Uh, you know, who, you know, find the local bands, figure out, you know, you know what the city's about is kind of through a record store. I mean, might not be as much like that these days, but to me, that's really important, you know. Um, so I try and replicate that feeling of that, that, uh, that sentiment, you know, going yeah. forward with the shop. That's but, awesome. Uh, you know, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. You're you're actually the second person who owns a record store that I've talked to in the last few months. I talked to with a guy named David, uh, who oh, runs yeah. a, a death metal record store in Copenhagen. Uh, from oh, yeah. in that band under gang. Yeah, David, lovely guy, and looks like a killer shop. Yeah. So it's you know I gotta I gotta start traveling the world and going to all these cool record shops. These people owned by the you know guys I'm interviewing, man. Absolutely, man. Come join us. <laughs> Yeah. So uh growing up, you know, uh so are are you originally from Melbourne? Yeah. Um I'm born and raised in Melbourne. Um yeah, grew up in on a central Melbourne. Yeah. So what got you into, you know, underground extreme music like grindcore and death metal and stuff? Because, you know, most people aren't born with a napalm death CD. <laughs> yeah, no true. Uh I Oh, again, I was really, really lucky when it came to, um, you know, understanding new sounds just through being around my dad a lot. Uh, he's, you know, a pretty influential figure for me when, you know, when it comes to that, you know, that period of time. I got into, I was really, really into hip hop. Um, uh-huh. I thought his his hip hop collection was fairly good. You know, it was the late 80s, uh, early 90s. So, you know, Bismarck E, uh, Ultramagnetic, uh, you know, that kind of era stuff, a lot of public enemy. He was, he had all those records and they were coming out. Um, but the one I, the, the artist that I was obsessed with was um, uh, Ice T. Okay. So when, when, like, Power, Power by mm-hmm. Ice T. Uh, and that, I got, that was my first, I remember specifically buying that on tape and that was my first. Um, you know, piece of music that I felt like I owned. Mm-hmm. And so I was obsessed. And then when he did Body Count, he came out with that first Body Count record. And I just, it just blew my mind. I never heard anything as fast, never heard anything as heavy. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not sure you could say that now, or whatever, but or as daggy as that sounds. But um, yeah, that, that was the pivotal moment. Uh, when, and that that was like you know anything anything from that on I, I just was obsessed with slide you know classics because um, they were fairly easy to find and mm-hmm. you know what was it was a Judgment Night soundtrack oh yeah was that like was Slayer Se- Night yeah yeah exactly that that kind of era kind of shifted me um, a little bit more like my ear was kind of this is, looks like it's something that um, is mine rather than my dad's or you know something a little bit more extreme especially the faster it got like the more i discovered fast music it didn't really matter what kind of music it was it's just like if, <laughs> if it was fast like i didn't you know like i was obsessed with uh, a pop punk band called satanic surfers mm-hmm. they're like a um, swedish kind of band i guess uh just you know nothing outrageous but they were just really fast they were uh, i would love them um you know then local shows I started you know because I lived fairly central in mm-hmm. Melbourne and um, I could access those kind of shows so like going to local shows as well really helped me out um, figuring out what I liked yeah I I know about the satanic surfers specifically from this compilation called short music for short people that's the one yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yeah it had like yeah. the shortest Blink 182 song ever on it and stuff. Yeah. I remember oh, were that. they on it? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. I didn't even remember that. Yeah. Uh, that's crazy. Along with like 99 um, other bands or something. So, yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, you know, it's, same, it's really the same, same as everyone kind of stumbled along with you know, something lights a fire in them and they just need to find more instant, you know, and again, like record stores were um, 
and pivotal for that period of time, like just going to record stores, asking, you know, what was what was cool, reading, reading, you know, reading the back of like yeah. LPs and figuring out, you know, what that shirt was or whatever. I remember when the first time I figured out who Sepultura was, uh, it's because I went to a show in Melbourne. It's like an all uh, like an under 18s um, all ages show, mm-hmm. and someone who stage dived landed on me and broke my finger. And I remember specifically in the air looking up and seeing that the the Sepultura S or, or whatever you know that the yes their logo flying through the air. And he took me out, and and I, I was what was that band like, what's that band that guy's that shirt that guy's wearing you know so that blew my mind too simple cheer definitely uh blew my mind yeah. dude that is a that is actually a a thing that will definitely imprint on your memory is like just the flying s coming at you dude yeah taking me out <laughs> so when did you pick up an instrument then were you a drummer first or did you start you know screaming in, in bands just just drums yeah I, I i started playing drums pretty early i think um i probably probably around you know 11 and 12 mm-hmm. i was given a pair of sticks and used to use the school so the primary school that i was at um would would uh play in the room that they had that like a music room or whatever and um yeah i got a kit maybe a year after that like it's a really you know classic shitty one and um from then I, I i didn't really stop i started a band like pretty much immediately um and i went to uh like this place i guess you it was a it was a really interesting place it was a school for learning music for kids in the area your dog's right. behind you that's hilarious <laughs> he was popping up making a cameo <laughs> he just came up he was like hey what's up i want to be on this interview that was <laughs> awesome um she um uh, so i went to some music school uh and it was kind of for kids that uh not like you know it was for kids that were uh didn't have you know much else and they they they, they needed like a, a place to go um mm-hmm. and I, I i i just gravitated towards that kind of environment um where they throw you in they wouldn't really teach you anything um you know there's no theory or anything but they'll throw you in um with a bunch of people that had similar interests so i would like punk music i liked you know hardcore music and yeah um, thrash and stuff like that so they were like these are your this is your crew you guys start a band we're going to yeah. promote it um and then we're going to record you if you're good enough we're going to have shows so that was pretty early on it was called rock and roll high school in melbourne um it was really amazing uh, for me that's so awesome you literally yeah, went to rock and roll high school. Literally went to rock and roll high school, you know, <laughs> and it was, it was crazy. It was really, really good. It was, um, you know, I talked to people about it around town. Not many people know about it. Um, it was probably, you know, early mid nineties. Um, so people around me that, that, you know, have been around for that long had, um, know about it. But I think the concept is totally relatable to anyone as that kind of like DIY mindset before i even knew what that was Uh you know what i mean um it was really cool uh we played you know we we that we had visitors from um different you know cities and uh, Uh like we had with the play in front of uh courtney love it from hole cool Um, you know you know just fun things like that you know um but anyway yeah that's where i kind of learned um drums and i never really learned how to play them properly and i still haven't um and as far as vocals go, I, you know, I, I, I don't really consider myself a vocalist. I consider myself a, um, a drummer. <laughs> okay, fair but, enough. You just yeah. happen to do vocals. Hap- oh. I happen to just do it. Yeah, yeah. So I, I first heard about you guys because I, uh, I buy records sometimes from uh, Iron Lung uh, Distro and, and their record label. <laughs> I saw some of your records on there was either put out by Iron Lung or distributed by Iron Lung. How did you... Uh, get in how did you get in with those guys like uh i don't what wh- how long does your relationship go back with those guys because jensen uh he's a seattle guy so just curious absolutely yeah yeah i mean that's a really good question um and i haven't ne- never been asked that but i uh they they you know jensen uh and john are like mm-hmm. their old friends we 
I I emailed them in 2004. Um, oh wow, going way back. 2003, 2003, 2004. Yeah, and um, I, I can't remember what it was. I I was in a band called Agents of Abhorrence, mm-hmm. and that band um, we ended up doing a split seven inch with Iron Lung, and we toured them in Australia. Um, we did their first Australian tour here around 2005. Awesome. Um, so I've, I've known those guys since around then um, and all their bands and all their projects. And um, it just, the, the caliber is so high with those guys. Um, yeah. And they were a massive influence on, on me personally because, you know, I, I was really into power violence um, and, and, you know, that kind of stuff, 65 stuff, um, you know, slap a ham records, all that kind of stuff. And um, I felt like, Ireland were articulating that that sound um, and doing it so well and projecting it in a new kind of environment where I could instead of like worship old older heads I could yeah. you know they were they were around me you know and they were part of the community and I could just you know send them my new demo or something yeah know, which still happens and um, you know that's why I still release stuff on Iron Lung if I can and um, or always buy their records and trust their uh, ear yeah they put out you know it might not be stuff that i necessarily like like all of it you know it might not be the my favorite stuff personally but i know mm-hmm. that like it's of high quality because those guys you know they 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 believe in trust in in everything that they put out which is is awesome so yeah uh, it's it's all interesting at least and in, in pretty killer shit so um, yeah exactly so you guys put out so both your bands, Faceless Burial and Internal Rot, put out killer records in 2020 that both got you know pretty good fanfare. Both got great reviews. It must have been kind of a bummer that you couldn't really you know capitalize on those and tour much because of the pandemic. That that probably sucked, huh? Yeah, totally. I mean, I guess yeah, <laughs> you know, you know what. <laughs> everyone everyone experienced it so i guess yeah. everyone can relate you know um you know uh, the, the one thing uh, you know i'm trying to think something to say about it but you know it, yeah it did it was unfortunate yeah. um that's 100 percent. but you know we're in melbourne we had the for some horrific reason we had the worst the uh, the most amount of lockdown periods in the world so we were like really, really shut down in melbourne um so I guess we recorded that, uh, we recorded speciation um, just before um, all that really yeah. happened. And it came out while we were locked down. Um, and we kept thinking it would, it would be, you know, finished soon or whatever, you know, but they didn't end up like that. We couldn't see each other for a really long time as well. We couldn't yeah. be in the same room. We were like, you know, we had a 5k radius we couldn't leave from. It was fucking hectic. Wow. Eh? Uh, but we, every time we had the small opportunity to like meet up, we would face this very, would, would, would rehearse. Um, yeah. So at least we got stuff done. We, we got a new album out of it. So that's oh. cool. I mean, yeah. So we can yeah. we expect that maybe in 2022 or 2023. Yeah. I mean, fingers crossed, like we should be dropping something, um, you know, in the next few months hopefully awesome yeah, definitely definitely um and the you know the internal rock thing was one of we've, we've been slow moving for for a while now but mm-hmm. i mean we dropped that record and um you know we had plans and but you know at the same time you know we're definitely an old, old band so when things when things don't go our way it's not a big deal for us anymore whereas faces burial we had this album we're like i think people yeah. might like it you know, we think we can go to America, we do oh, yeah. Europe or whatever, uh, you know, things like that. But, uh, you know, we'll wait. It'll be worth the wait. Nice. So you will be coming to the U.S. though with Face of Burial sometime in the, you know, in the next couple of years at least, Hope, hopefully. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. I mean, you know, you know, barring a disaster, we'll be, we'll be there. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, Especially up in Seattle. Love Seattle. Uh, so you've played here in Seattle before with... I've, yeah, I have never seen uh, your, any of your bands. So, uh, Faceless Burial has never been to uh, America. In fact, Faceless Burial is the complete opposite of all my other bands in the way that we work, where we jam and 
um, write a lot more than we ever toured. So we're not really a touring band, but um, I've played there a few times with other bands. Um, nice. Uh, Internal Rock tour there. We, we played there as well, um, uh, 2013 maybe, or something, something like that, yeah. Man, I feel like I missed out. FOMO, it's okay. That's I'll all see- good. I mean, it was small you know small time band you know i think the funny thing about internal rock is that i don't think people really realize we released an album before the one that came out in 2020 uh, and, and no one no one really knew about what we were doing previously uh, but we you know yeah, people knew about it but definitely that album helped us um i think people paid attention to that record a bit more than our uh, other stuff what was it about it what 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 was it that caught people's attention? Do you think? I mean, obviously the music kicks ass, but was there something? Was it the album cover is kind of interesting? It's like a really pretty girl with like this kind of brutal like cover. You know, it's like it's 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 kind of a juxtaposition. You know, do you think that had anything to do with it, or was it on a playlist, or you know, was there what what do you think? Shit, I don't really know how how those things work. <laughs> something just picks uh, up, you know. Yeah, I think just a bit of luck, maybe, you know, like, sure. I mean, or a bit of just like plugging away at it. We, we, you know, we've been a band since 2009. That's true. Um, you know, we've released, you know, splits, mm-hmm. we've released seven inches, we released, you know, you know, we've toured, um, you know, we've been in the States twice. Uh, but I, I don't think that uh, there's any rhyme or reason. I think maybe the right time, right place or, um, you know, the right person listened to it or maybe there was a you know people needed to hear something wild for that year i don't know that yeah. album i will say is uh is like an album that like if i'm having a crappy day i'll just put that at cd on in my car and just crank it and i just like just like do the like frank mullen suffocation like, ah, like <laughs> i just like yeah dude, I just, yeah man that's a good one so when oh. you're having a crappy day What's an album you can put on yeah. uh, to either get aggression out or to, you know, it could be a, it could be a spiritual uplifting album that could make you, you know, a little bit more positive, but when you're having a crappy day, what's something you can go to? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, that's a really good question. You know I mean? Uh, just talking about it though, like effigy suff- suffocation, um, yeah. that would be like, I need something, you know, immediate. <laughs> yeah. I need something really just plovering immediately. And that, that comes to mind when, when you said it. I mean, that's definitely, you know, I feel like that's a record that surprises me how heavy it is every time and how old it is and just, you know, how many people have tried to do it as good and just haven't. I mean, that's pretty that's a pretty good one. Uh, recently, I've been really enjoying the band called Halas. Um, they're from Europe and kind of like, I don't know what they're kind of like space rocky kind of proggy slash just, um, just really good music, uh, really good songwriting. And they really tick my box at the moment. They, uh, kind of for anyone who's really into like wishbone yeah. or some, you know, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll, something a bit older, but they do it really well without being, you know, cheesy in any way and a really earnest kind of. Uh, delivery in their music and i feel like that that's definitely one that i've been listening to a lot to uh when i need something to hit really well as well on a different kind of sonic level for sure what are they called again halas it's like h-a-l-l-a-s okay and maybe the umlaut on somewhere yeah I'm check them to out. Check they're, them out. They're, they're quite interesting yeah they're really good um really really good and they did about three albums ago was when I was like, oh, this is quite good, Some really good hits. And then they did one a couple of years ago that was even better. It's actually an incredible record. And they did a new one this year. A couple of months ago it came out. So I've been flogging that. That's awesome. Yeah. Right on, man. Well, uh, you know, just to, to ask you a couple questions here. So a couple goofy questions. So, you know, I'm wearing yeah, an electric wizard t-shirt, uh, you know, band t-shirts are, you know, kind of a big co- part of our culture from when we we're little kids to, you know, <laughs> yeah. here. Uh, I like to ask people what their first record was, but I'm not going to ask you because you probably have so many records. You can't even remember. What was your first band t-shirt you ever got as a kid? Ooh. 
it's all iced tea related. It's okay, all, really? Like, yeah, all iced tea. Uh, I had um, the, the first band T-shirt. I still have it somewhere. It's a Body Count T-shirt. Oh my god, that's uh, so hard. From the first album. Yeah. Body Count T-shirt, and then it was it got they got banned because it had the Cop Killer um, mm -hmm. song on the yep. um, and it had has Cop Killer on the back. That's and I, incredibly I was, hard. I was ripping that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's real hard. Um, so I, I specifically remember that being my first, like, this is really badass. I Good went year. to, I went to visit my uncle uh, a couple years back in Texas and he still has the old, uh, body count. Like, you know how they had the, um, the long box for CDs. Yeah. Yeah. He yeah. still has the body count long box with cop killer on it. Fuck yeah. That's sick. Yeah, dude. So the it. old, the old CD. He was it. like, yeah, he was like, I, and it was, it's still shrink wrapped. I'm like, holy crap, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Don't sell it. Don't sell I know. it. I hope you, hopefully you inherit it, man. Exactly. Yeah. He, he actually hooked me up because he used to do a metal radio show back in, it's kind of funny. I inherited that, you know, pretty much that whole thing. He used to do a metal radio show in college. So he gave me a stack of CDs. He gave me the old Grind Crusher, uh, earache CD he got, and a bunch of other things. So. Hell yeah. yeah along with a record that i don't think i'm ever gonna listen to it's uh it's wait no it yeah it's trent reznor doing a remix of megadeth i don't think anyone needs to hear that yes well you know <laughs> apples and oranges you know it's... Exactly. you never know there could be a banger in there you never know who knows uh yeah. going off on a weird tangent here so okay my last yeah, question ahead. for you max uh if you can show us if not uh just tell us pick a scar on your body and tell us the story of how you got it <laughs> yeah right all right um that's a that's a that's a that's a weird one but i, I respect that what have i got for you I'm not sure if you'd be able to see it i could fully undress for it sure let's do it only fans with max from faceless bro <laughs> What am I going to do? Um, you might not be able to see it, but I, I've got a... Let me see. Let me see. Bear with me. Yeah, yeah. You can put some erotic music on if you need. Dun, dun, boom, chicka, wow, wow. Put on some internal rot. <laughs> Ooh, the anticipation. There you go. Can you see that? Uh huh. That's my my collarbone is still broken. Jesus. So it hasn't been set. I um, I, that's just one that I can think of. It's right here. Both sides are broken, but I um, I, I did it playing a game, football, which is Aussie Aussie rules football. I'm not sure if you know you know about that. I know it's a lot uh, more brutal. Yeah, it's a lot more brutal, and and you got to know what you're doing. And I, 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 I'm not, I'm not big and strong, and uh, I'm not brutal in any way. So uh, yeah, I, I got taken out really badly, um, flying back through for, for a ball, and got mm -hmm. clobbered, landed face down, and broke my collarbone. Um, but I had to go on tour. I had a European tour booked, and <laughs> it was like about two weeks away um so i couldn't get it reset and then i just went on tour and played played with it like that um the drums just like, yeah played drums sorry fuck um, that yeah it was extremely uncomfortable um and i never and by the time i was back it was kind of i had to get surgery to um to reset it but i uh i didn't so it's kind of just stuck on a on an angle like that for forever so that's you now. That's that's just me. That's, that's just how it is. Uh, uh, you're like, I'll deal with it later. And then later comes and you're like, okay, yeah, I, exactly. never mind. Yeah, 15 years later, you, you, you're showing someone on the internet. Thanks, metal. Thanks, hardcore. Thanks, <laughs> underground music. Dude, thank you so much for chatting with us. Uh, do you, do you, is there an online store uh, that we can, or like a, a, a way to support your bands? What's the best way to support your bands? I'll, I'll ask it like that. 
Yeah, the best way, I mean, the best way to support us would be to, you know, buy um, a re- if you're in America, buy a record uh, from Iron Lung or uh, Dark Descent Records, support 625 Records. Um, you know, all the 625 stuff is is pretty cheap um, through, it, well, I mean, it should be very cheap. It's affordable yep. through Abolition Records um, uh, in Cali. And, um, you know, Dark Descent definitely have got a really good um, mail order. Um, you, we've got a link up with uh, Inferno screen printing in, uh, in the US. Yeah. So if anyone wants to buy a faceless burial shirt, we'll be um, supplying them with designs over the coming year, especially with um, the new album coming out. That really helps us because they give us a really good cut from that. Um, and if you can afford to it, and afford to do it, just buy from Faceless Burial Bandcamp and uh, or or any of our labels, especially if you're in Europe or whatever, just Masako and Anjo in um, UK for sure, or you know, any anyone like that, for sure. I bought one of their your gray shirts with the purple print from your bandcamp and you I, I got it sent from Australia. I appreciated that. Dude, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Hell yeah, <laughs> well, man. That's awesome. I appreciate yes. that. Or honestly, man, it means a lot to me. You know, I appreciate that. Of course, man. I love the records. I uh, can't wait to see you guys in Seattle sometime. You know, when you know things are getting back to normal, sort of. And and uh, I, I hope to see you guys sometime. And uh, thanks for chatting with me, man. Beautiful. Thanks for having me. <laughs>